ReZero, episode 5 or whatever. What do you even do at this point? What do you even do now? Yeah, God bless you. Honestly, if I'm Subaru, I kind of want to quit. I don't know what to do at this point. Nesama, Nesama, let's wait for the best chance to kill this kid. It takes a lot to stomach this, just look at them having been murdered. We're touching already. This is not helping your case, Subaru. Obviously, they have it out for you. The goal is, is what? It's something like, prove your innocence, but that's tough. It's like someone coming up to you and saying, prove to me you're not evil. And you're like, uh, what, what is the actionable thing here? And also, if someone is already highly suspicious, anything abnormal in your behavior will be filtered through that lens of this is suspicious behavior. So like even super outward attempts to win them over is suspicious. Being nice to them is suspicious. Like there's no way to go without being suspicious in some way. Grabbing their hands is, I mean, that's suspicious for different reasons, but it's suspicious. And you can't talk about your problem because, you know, portal hand. Maybe the best thing you have going for you is that it seems like they're waiting for you to make Make an overt slip up to murder you. So you avoid that. Maybe stay very close to them. No sudden movements. Actually, come to think of it, I'm a bit confused. Were they always hovering around in the distance off screen when he was hanging out alone with Amelia? They were, weren't they? They always seem to pop up. Also, I think it cannot be understated how much conviction this takes from Subaru to face his killers like this. Because he's experienced them murdering him. Very suspicious behavior. Out of the gate, huh? Insulting us from birth. This is not a great start. <laughs> not going well. Subaru damage control, what is it? Oh, everyone's here, and she's wearing our favorite outfit. <laughs> Don't let the thoughts in, Amelia. Don't let it in. Second is to not destroy the trust of the staff. Right. Is bath time necessary or can we skip that? Wait, shaman that attacks Roswell Mansion? What are you on about? That's the curse he got? Yeah, that's true. We gotta deal with the curse too. For some reason, Ram and Ram just jumped in my mind as was a priority. Yeah, maybe you can make yourself indispensable through cleaning. Clean it so well they can't imagine anyone else doing it. You're gonna really peel potatoes like your life depends on it. That would be exciting. That would be a game changer. So far, so far, the skill class has been attack test dummy. I wonder what class it'll end up as. Nice, nice and simple. Did he just say wind bending? You don't have one. <laughs> Shadow, interesting. That's cool though. I'll take that. I'd rather have that than the standard ones. And Shadow Light. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. That's a classic RPG. Nah, it always has a powerful spell at the end though. Yeah, a lot of the time, Dark and Light or Shadow Holy, whatever, is status and buffs, debuffs and healing. But then they'll have a damage attack towards the end, like Holy. It could be really cool. But Shadow is interesting as opposed to Light for Subaru. I think a growing question in the show is what is his role and why is he here and is it for a positive force or a negative force? Right now, there's this major hope that if he figures things out in the right sequence, he can get things to a point where he wins. But it's possible he's being kept alive and, and allowed to go through these multiple iterations to get to a, a point that is advantageous for a demonic force. For example, like getting Amelia to some elevated state only to steal her power or biding time until this sequence of planets comes into arrangement to open the door to God's kingdom so that you can steal his keys, whatever. Highly questionable, especially given what we've seen and smelled, that this is going in a positive direction. This is fun. This is fun. I, I see. Because I don't see. This is awful. <laughs> I never thought about this. How awful it would be to have this have these spells on you. That was terrible. Let's never do that again. This is your legacy. You may do this to others. It's devastating and lonely. Wow, Puck is a real one. Actually giving us something of value. Where is my gate exactly? I need a little more information. 
I don't think the sound effects are part of it, but does it get in your head? He turn back to himself. <laughs> Good job. You don't, you don't say. You should just stick to potatoes, is the translation for that one. But does that mean he has a lot of power? Blatantly? He also won't be able to be misogynist. Hmm? Oh, it's an MP healing snack. <laughs> Finally, we're having some real RPG fun. Until now, it's just been death. It's been death and pain. That was a 10 MP snack. Hmm. That's true. Mm. That's tough. That's one of the oldest problems and one of the things I've been talking about the longest. I think it's specific to a certain personality type. Accepting things is hard. I don't know about Subaru. I, I feel like he's putting on a very brave face in a very difficult situation and is very exuberant and friendly, but actually is an insecure person and hasn't gotten a lot of actual connection. And he's trying really hard to like make it work here, but he's not really getting it here either, except for Emilio, which partly explains his fixation on her. Part of me is expecting there to be a major crash at some point when the fantasy and the image he's trying to project just can't keep up with the reality and like his history. What is this? She's just waiting any slip up. Did you? Did you though? Right. What is it even? You smell like a witch. Does that mean it's too late? Which of Envy? Who cannot be named? Oh, you don't say her name. Oh, Deadly Sins mentioned. Relatable. Okay. This is a very familiar story. Just like Emilio. That's the resemblance that she alluded to. That causes her quite a bit of misfortune. I just assumed it was a test of like how much you knew about the world. Now I'm wondering if there's more. Is that it? One thing I really like about this trope of the great evil being sealed away but not defeated, well, one way to look at it is that there is no defeating evil, permanently. Because in the broadest sense, there is no evil. Evil is sort of a, a warped byproduct of forces that actually can be really good, that compose the underlying structure of life itself. I mean, just looking at the seven sins. Lust is an extreme end of the spectrum of sexual desire, which there's nothing inherently wrong with. Gluttony, consumption, pride, maybe something like self-identity or desire for self-actualization, desire to be significant. Sloth, rest. Wrath is something like emotional conviction. Or it could be recognition of danger, which leads to fear, which often leads to anger. Greed, maybe general desire, and maybe envy also an offshoot of that. Or envy could be a recognition of something greater than oneself and a misjudgment of what that means and what to do about it. But yeah, you're never going to defeat it. You're only going to hem it in. And like the staving it off is a challenge passed down from generation to generation. There's perhaps no great battle or singular victory. There's like you winning your battle and then just having faith in the future. I think the way it does carry forward is the legacy and the narrative. But yeah, like even with the Witch of Envy, she just said she's starved for love, which like, I mean, understandable, right? And one way to conceptualize that is that those forces in humanity are just a byproduct of living in a world of death death and atrophy and limited resources. This is getting unrelated now, but like I wonder if that isn't also an interpretation of original sin. Like humans are born into flesh and blood, carrying the baggage of biological history and that very problem of things are not infinite and things die and growth is difficult and requires consumption. That is just the structure of biological things. Very suspicious. He's talking to himself? Alarmingly energetic. As far as the was not mentioned. Don't ask. Don't ask. 
destroyed. Wrecked. Back off, chump. And they will murder you. A little bit worn out from Sparrow's antics. <laughs> He just did that and said it's okay? Oh, he's a mess right now, yeah. He's an exuberant mess. An exuberant mess, yeah. But also, you shouldn't be breaking... Yeah, right. Don't mind, don't mind. My huge error. I'm gonna go get my ball and chain. You just wait right here. <laughs> There's a lot of dissonance happening. He's telling himself he's okay. Right. You created the problem that you fixed. Shouldn't be getting too close. It's sad that she was so right. Oh, if I act exuberant, exuberant enough, the existential pain can't come in. Oh, this, this is the sickness. He's gonna hurl. Everyone can see that this is not right. It doesn't work though. It just makes them, it puts them off. It's all alone right now. There it is. Damn, he really let loose. He was holding that one back for a while. Don't throw up into water. That's not a good idea. That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that is what I'm focusing on. On the plus side, this time he did not end up covered in feces. This is the no feces reality so far. Depending on how they interpret it, there's a chance this works out in Sabaro's favor. One, because it might seem like he's just working really hard. Two, something like pity, because he's not really fooling anyone. It's one thing when you feel like someone's trying to deceive you. It's another thing when you realize someone is trying to deceive themselves. <laughs> the whole mansion heard that. Don't even try. No, it's give it up. Please stop talking for one second. So, the thread has been pulled. It's all coming unraveled. Just snap, slap the fakeness out of you. Ah, oh, silence. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Oh, the lap. That is very charitable. She is very nice. Just <laughs> In contrast, honesty. This is where he's really been, obviously, fooling no one. I believe it. And also, even worse, there's no like guarantee that anything good will happen. <laughs> hard to imagine how insane and difficult this all would be, but not hard to sympathize. I mean, dude has literally died brutally. This breakdown feels very honest. He's not using it for effect to evoke sympathy. It's just like finally the truth being allowed to come out. This feels so much better to me than like his bravado. That being said, despite how obvious it is to see from the outside, I've a thousand percent <laughs> been exactly this person. Oh no, no, I'm, I'm fine. I got under control. Don't worry. Yeah, I know. You know, it's a little risky, but hey, it's me. I got this. If I just keep putting one foot in front of the other, this is going to work. Don't think about it. Don't let the dread in. <laughs> but you can only keep that up so long. It's especially difficult and draining when you're giving this much effort, but like I said, there's no guarantee it will turn out in your favor. That could be for multiple reasons. It could be because there are just so many steps you have to go through before you can even begin to imagine success that it's overwhelming and daunting and invisible at the stage you're at. Or it could just be it's not in your hands. Like it's not something you actually have direct control over. And this is part of the pain of one of the things this most directly makes me think of, which is being deeply in love yet having the relationship clearly going under. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to take stock and clean house. 
else and the emotions need to catch up to you. And for whatever reason, sometimes this very thing is this reset that actually helps you attempt whatever it is with renewed energy in a way that's a little bit more attuned to what's actually going on. And also, while Subaru doesn't really have this luxury because this is a matter of life and death for him, I think typically if like you actually honestly can have this kind of breakdown where you say, wow, I really worked hard. Like I really tried. I did everything I could. As sad as it feels now, the final assessment of that will be positive because you know you showed up doing your best. And if it's revealed that things just failed because of things that were mostly out of your hands, if that's really what it is and not cope, eventually you'll wrap your head around that and it will be a positive force in one's life, even though it feels impossible in a moment like this. And this is also like one of the major difficulties of life. You know, you're doing all of this stuff on faith that things will work, but there's not that many guarantees we actually have. This is part of where the strength comes in. That is an act of strength. It's crazy to say at a, after a moment like that, but this is actually like the most I've cared about Subaru and liked him. In like what looks on the surface to be his worst moment. Honestly, it's such a powerful thing. He earned their trust by accident. Almost. <laughs> as far as living on very slim margins right now. I understand the words that you just said. <laughs> that happened and it was great. Yeah, you should have like pretended you were this gruff knight in shining armor because that would have been believable. Subaru's projection of his internal emotional state is just porous and fragile. <laughs> it's funny how they've ended, ended up becoming good friends. They feel like the closest. Good friends. Zbrex obviously trusts her a lot. And she acts gruff, but she tolerates him really well. I think she's lonely in her library. Oh, who touched you? Who touched you, Subaru? Could be the village, yeah. Those bratty kids. Oh, that makes sense. You got, you got an excuse to kill those damn kids. I mean. Now, Beatrice has done a lot for him. Along with the abuse. And we're back. <laughs> Hopefully a little bit better for it. Everyone knows everything in this mansion. Everyone knows about your bath time with the Lord of the Manor too. Oh, so he actually wasn't cursed the night before. He was just sick from work. You know what would have been crazy for Subaru? And this is a potential for the future. The extent to which him being jovial and exuberant and friendly is genuine, he absolutely should keep. That will end up being a really endearing thing once it's fully what he's feeling and what he is. But just for argument's sake, imagine Subaru emerges and he's like really sincere, focused, says only what needs to be said in the situation and no more. How impactful that would be suddenly. This is not a critique of Subaru, just to contrast how powerful that sudden, honesty and simplicity of character would be in the face of like all he's doing. What a difference in charisma that would be. It's weird. Humans are really good at reading certain things and not good at reading other things. Assumptions often are wrong in certain areas, but are like very clear in other ways. And I think one of the ways it's pretty clear, even if people can't articulate this, they can pick up on when something is not right, when something's not matching, when there's an inconsistency, because it's very hard to fake that convincingly over time. And I think what people want is not so much the surface level attributes like pleasantness or saying the right thing, but rather consistency and clarity and stability. That person is contained. They will be what they are. There's going to be no sudden movements. Or even if there are risks here, they're being clearly displayed, so I won't be caught off guard. I'm not going to be punched in the back of my head. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Out of the goodness of her heart, she helped you. There you go. He's growing, even if none of this will exist in the future because of, you know, his death. This feels like acceptance in a very subtle way. We're all going. <laughs> There's a non-zero chance. I mean, like, probably not gonna happen. There is a possibility that they just, like, murder him in the woods before they even get to the village. In fact, maybe that's why Ram is going. Ram seems to know about Ram's murderous ideations. I cried 
cried my lungs out and stopped crying. Oh yeah, that's basically what happened that episode. I cried, I cried a lot, I stopped crying. Later I will cry some more. It's pretty amazing to me really looking honestly at what, what I feel watching up to this point. This did so much for my conception of Subaru. It's such a relief. It's not like a glorious, glamorous moment. I tried so hard and I failed, but really the way it hits me is it's endearing and it's reassuring. We found Subaru, he's a good kid and he, he actually is going through a very difficult situation and maybe his approach isn't perfect, but underneath that are really good intentions and really admirable traits. There was some clutter cleared away in that breakdown. And I'm very big at trying to assess people's core. Even before the breakdown, one of the things I think was important for the people in the manor was observance of something that he was not making, which is that he, he is working and trying really hard. Maybe it's not clear to them exactly what he was working on and for what purpose, but like he was so focused, he wasn't even seeing them in a very real way. I think I'm most excited for the journey into the village, not for the curse and its origins, but for the time with Rem and Ram. He's a really interesting character so far that didn't get a lot of time in this episode. Still, underneath it all, there's this feeling of dread for me that the worst is yet to come, that he's doing all this just to lead to an outcome that is going to be more unfortunate than any of the things he's experienced so far, in that it involves an inevitable death of someone that isn't him, which may have been the grand design from the beginning. And that person will probably be Amelia, just because she's too nice for this world. Thank you.